Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends is easily one of my favorite shows of all time. I loved it as a kid, and I rewatched it recently to see if it held up, and I can say with all certainty that it does. However, with every good TV show, there's a few bad episodes. And in the case of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, there is one episode that I not only despised as a kid, where I would always skip it if it was on, but upon rewatching it, I thought it was even worse than how I felt about it as a kid, which frankly doesn't happen often, because when you're a kid, you hyperbolize things, and you see things as way over the top and way bigger than they actually are. And somehow, to me now, I think this episode is worse. I'm sure fans of the show such as myself know exactly what episode I'm talking about. The episode is called Where There's a Wilt, There's a Way, slash everyone knows it's bendy now this is one of the a b episodes of foster's home for imaginary friends so it's technically two 11 minute episodes put into a 22 minute block so it's not your you know usual 22 minute long story it is a bit of a different kind of episode which is also somewhat of a detriment to both of these stories so what is it that makes this episode so bad well that's what we're here to take a look at today let's start with the first story where there's a wilt there's a way like i said 11 minutes long the plot of this one is wilt wants to watch a basketball game with mac and blue but he realizes he can't say no to anyone's request because he thinks it would be rude, it might hurt their feelings. Whatever reasons it may be, Wilt is a stand-up kind dude that is incredibly selfless. Because I'll do anything she asks me to. Why? Because I'll do anything anyone asks me to. Why? Because I always say yes. Why? Because I can't say no yes now this episode is motivated by wilt's character as just the nicest guy around which is interesting for sure but the way it's executed is really unsatisfying for the viewer because we're watching a really nice character being taken advantage of and he never wins he never gets his way he never really changes in the episode he winds up losing this battle that he's having with saying no to people that are taking advantage of him, which sucks. I don't want to see Wilt get taken advantage of. I want to see him stand up to Blue or stand up to whoever is telling him to do things that are outside of the realm of reason for someone to do just willy-nilly. Now, technically, Wilt does stand up for himself at the end of the episode, but then he is immediately taken advantage of yet again. And the moral of the story is... I guess, don't be nice to people? I, I really can't find out what they were going for with this episode's ending, because he does get taken advantage of immediately. It's to end on a laugh. I get that 100%. I also get that it's only 11 minutes long, so you don't have a whole lot of room to flesh out that story. But that's what makes this one so frustrating and so terrible. It's because if this was a 22-minute episode, and if Wilt was given the time to actually complete an arc where he finally stands up for himself, that could be really fantastic. That probably would have been one of the better episodes in the show. But because they only gave it 11 minutes, there was no room for that character growth and there was no room for a satisfying end. It's kind of just a bunch of cheap laughs that aren't all that funny to begin with and they're at the expense of a lovable fan favorite character. It just is an episode that doesn't get anything right despite having a pretty dang good idea behind it. Great. Now, how about getting me my chips? Sure, you got it, pal. Wait, I mean... Now, if you thought that one was bad, you haven't seen nothing yet. Now we gotta talk about Everyone Knows It's Bendy. The plot for this one is a new imaginary friend moves into Foster's named Bendy, and he keeps doing things and blaming it on all of our main characters. He keeps, like, stealing cookies from the cookie jar, writing names on the wall, just, in general, being an asshole, screwing around with things, and then playing the sad orphan card and crying and getting Wilt and Blue and Eduardo and Coco into trouble. Now, I don't know if we have any aspiring screenwriters watching this video, but in case you are, let me explain something that, you know, most human beings understand. If 
you're putting our main characters, the likable people, the people that we can relate to as an audience, if you're putting them through hell, if you're torturing them essentially, what's satisfying is when they overcome that, when they fight back, when they stand up for themselves. Those are the stories we like to see because we can put ourselves in their position and we can kind of live vicariously through these cartoon characters. When Wilt stands up to Blue for making him do all this stuff for him, it's satisfying because it's like, yeah, that gives me the, that's what I want to do to this guy at my school or my stupid fucking teacher. You know, it amps you up. It amps you up a good deal. These two episodes both have the same problem. Bad things happen to the characters we like and there's no satisfaction. They just get screwed over and that's the end of the episode. It's so weird that it happened twice in a row. You know what I mean? How it's in the same episode, these two 11 minute segments, they get it wrong twice. How do they not do the first one, realize, oh, wait a second, this doesn't work at all. But then they immediately repeated the same process. In this episode, Bendy goes around blaming our main characters for things that he did, and when they try to fight back, all of Blue's friends abandon him, and then Blue once again gets in trouble for trying to show what Bendy's been doing to him and his friends. He's totally framing me! You gotta believe me! Guys, you gotta back me up! It's a terrible episode. Like, beyond awful. The moral here in this one is if you try to stand up for yourself for things that you did not do, if someone's trying to frame you for something and you try to stand up for yourself, your friends will abandon you and you'll still get in trouble for things you did not do. This episode is just downright terrible, but I have a way to fix it. I have a pitch that would have completely solved this episode. You just change the last two minutes or so to where when Blue sets up a scheme to catch Bendy, catch him in the act of stealing a cookie and reveal that he's been doing all this terrible stuff. Instead of just having Blue do it, you have Blue and all his friends do it. And yes, it still goes a bit too far, but the episode then ends with all of them standing in the corners in the room like we see earlier on, including Bendy this time. So Bendy's getting what he deserves, our main characters are happy about that, but they're still getting what they deserve because in order to catch a bad guy, they had to do a bad thing. So everyone gets what they deserve, and it's a nice, satisfying, goofy little ending because, you know, they're still where they were earlier in the episode, but they have a different outlook on it because at least this time, they caught Bendy. Bam! That's how you do an 11 minute episode of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. That would have solved this one. It's still just really frustrating to have two episodes in a row, or I guess one big episode, one 22 minute session of our main characters, our fan favorites, getting tortured essentially, and just getting taken advantage of, and then just having it end in an unsatisfying way. I don't know what they were thinking with this one, but it's downright terrible. And for good reason, it is the lowest rated episode of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends on IMDb, and it's definitely the lowest rated one in my mind as well. It's just downright terrible. But I've said my piece, I said what I would do, but I wanna hear now is what you all think about this situation. What did you think of these episodes? Have you seen them? If not, I don't recommend it, uh, really, but it is interesting to see just how much they screwed up. And Foster's as a show is just fantastic. So if you haven't seen the show, definitely go check it out. But I want to hear from you, post ideas and your thoughts and all of that down in the comment section below. I'll try to read through everything throughout the week. I try to read every comment on this channel, but frankly, things have been going so good that there are too many comments for me to read, which is a good thing. It's a good thing and a bad thing because I like reading everything and, you know, talking about some stuff in the comments and just seeing all these different thoughts. And, you know, as the channel does get bigger, it becomes harder and harder to do that. So I want to enjoy that while I still can. It, it, it's a bunch of confusing thoughts and feelings, but I can say that I am very, very grateful for all the support recently. Couldn't be doing this without all of you, and I will see you all next week. My name's Mr. Cow. Goodbye.